Charl Valentin Alcan's Festin des Op, Aesop's Feast, which I have just played, is only one of a set of twelve etudes. From this fact, I think you may begin to get some idea of the huge scale on which Alcan works. Etudes numbers four through seven comprise a symphony for piano. Although Alcan has been called the Berlioz of the piano, this sobriquet <coughs> applies only to his music. As a man, he was the very opposite of Berlioz. He was shy, retiring, afraid of the world. In order to protect himself, to keep his integrity intact, he withdrew from the world. He was not a fighter. He was morbidly sensitive and easily discouraged. He had learned that discouragement was ruinous to his work, so he avoided placing himself in positions where he might become discouraged. Alcan was a frustrated symphonist. In his early years, he had written orchestral music for which he could neither get a hearing nor a publisher, so he returned to his beloved piano. Superb pianist that he was, and knowing every nook and cranny of the piano's possibilities, he found he was able to summon forth from these intractable black and white keys the impressions of enormous orchestral and choral forces. Much of Alcan's piano music is symphonic or choral in nature and effect, and yet it is real piano music. When orchestral composers write for the piano, as did Wagner in his small piano pieces or Berlioz in his song accompaniments, one senses that the music is not germane to the instrument and that the uncomfortable composer is squeezing orchestral music within the confines of the keyboard. With Alcan, we find genuine piano music which evokes the orchestra and thereby adds new dimensions to piano writing. If this music were transcribed for the orchestra, it would lose some of its effect because one of its important features is the way it suggests the orchestra in terms of the piano. Alcan's symphony for piano is in four movements. In order not to interrupt the flow of the music, I shall comment now on all of the movements and then play the piece straight through. The first movement is a grand and tragic, beautifully proportioned piece in sonata allegro form. It begins with a somber, gasping theme worthy of César Franck. by the way, adored Alcan as a man and as a musician, and as a tribute to his memory, transcribed for organ some of Alcan's pedal piano pieces. The second movement of the symphony is a funeral march full of remarkable features. It is designated in the original edition as Sulla morte d'un uomo da bene, on the death of a good man. It begins as follows. strange, archaic atmosphere of this theme is caused by the fact that the harmonies are modal rather than being based on the regular minor scale. The mood of this opening reminds me forcibly of the second movement of Bruckner's Fourth Symphony, written much later, of course. and also the funeral march in Berlioz's Symphonie Funèbre et Triomphale. You will remember that I spoke earlier about pedal points. Alcan makes wonderful use of pedal points in this movement to suggest the clanging of bells. Clashing discords bring to mind Russian music, Mussorgsky's pictures at an exhibition, for instance, which, to keep our date straight, appeared years later.
middle section or trio of Alcan's funeral march begins like this. It reminds one of the corresponding place in Berlioz's Symphonie Funèbre et Triomphale. Alcan does wonderful things with his voice leading. Listen to these dissonances in the left hand. Now I'll add the right hand. At the climax of this section, there is again a clanging of bells, again based on a pedal point. like a brief, consoling choral benediction, enter unexpectedly. Reminding one again of Mussorgsky. Alcon's tiny benediction is actually a transformation of the funeral march theme, which returns suddenly. The march is not repeated verbatim. A marvelous effect is added later, sounding like the clopping of horses drawing the hearse. which is not at all unlike the Bidlo section of Mussorgsky's pictures. And at the climax of the march, a muffled drum roll, a final salute as the coffin is lowered into the earth. Anyone who has ever lived in a village in a Catholic country must have retained an indelible impression of the tolling of the death knell, the cloche des agonisants, as the French call it, or agonia in Italy, repeating over and over the interval of a minor second. Chopin recalls this wonderfully in his funeral march. as does Liszt in his funerai. And in his Trovatore fantasy. Alcan at first only suggests the death knell. But at the end of the movement, after the drum roll, the tolling begins. Interrupted by a fleeting memory of the trio, first in the major, then in the minor, and ending comfortingly in the major, while low voices intone, requiescat.
The third movement is called Minuet, but this is no courtly dance. Rather, it is a dance of specters and apparitions. This is the opening theme. If its jagged cross rhythms sound familiar to you, you are probably thinking of Prokofiev's third piano concerto. Or perhaps it reminds you of the Walton Violin Concerto. In spirit, the movement may remind you again of Mussorgsky. This is Alcon. This is Mussorgsky. The last movement of Alcan's piano symphony begins like this. Did you notice that the theme seems to grow out of the main theme of the previous movement? Let me start the last movement again, and I'll play a little further this time. Yes, I know, that sounds like something else. Does it sound like this? That was Brahms B minor Rhapsody, published 23 years after Alcan's symphony. As I have said before, and will say again, the important thing is what a composer does with his material. Therefore, Brahms' Rhapsody and Alcan's Finale must be judged each on its own merits and on its own terms. This Finale of Alcan's Symphony reminds me not only of Brahms, but of one of the most thrilling passages Berlioz ever wrote, the fantastic ride to hell from the damnation of Faust. I don't know that Alcan's finale is riding to hell, but riding somewhere it certainly is. It is full of galloping hooves and is enormously exciting and enormously difficult to play, I might add. Listen to this fragment. Listen to Berlioz's ride to hell. The coda of Alcan's finale is another and even more striking foreshadowing of a Brahmsian characteristic. I'll play the passage slowly. Listen to the typical Brahmsian rhythmical mannerism of two notes in one hand against three in the other. try to burden your memory with all the things I have told you about this symphony. I'm sure that the important points will come back to you as you hear the music straight through. If they don't, well, just enjoy the music. Here is Charles Valentin Alcan's four-movement symphony for piano. <laughs> 